Let me go and show you content. So content is really what makes DAS Studio totally shine and the whole DAS ecosystem is just fantastic. So you can think of the content store and DAS Studio as a little bit like a box of Legos, which is you know why I'm actually wearing my new Lego t-shirt here, the little Lego guy. You build pieces, you buy pieces from the store and you assemble them together in your own projects. And this is kind of what that reminds me of. You build your scene together and build something out of nothing with your creative vision. And for that, we need content. There's all kinds of content is available, but what DAS really specializes on is characters, photorealistic human characters, as well as creatures of all kinds. So aliens, pirates, and you know, people with scars and non-binary characters, literally you name it, it's there. And for anything that's not there, you can blend these things together. So to make sense of that statement, we'll have a look at content currently. So we can go and close this down here, go to installed, go to figures, and I'll untick this box. I'll talk to you about how this all works and plays together. These are all the figures that I've installed on my smart content. And one of these products is this blue thing here, which is the Genesis 8 Starter Essentials. And that is essentially a human figure morph, actually two human figure morphs, one for the female, one for the male. And when you load that in, depending on what's installed, different types of sliders will come up in your parameters menu. And they will be able to shape this form into different things like, you know, a more rotund guy, maybe a dwarf, maybe an alien, that sort of thing. That's one thing that these guys can do. This is free, by the way, the Genesis 8 Starter Essentials. Then on top of that, there's what's known as material presets or shaders, and they will paint something on the outside of this shape. Together, this will make up a human character or a creature or whatever. When you buy a custom character, then those are based on these figures. So really, if I double click on George here now, then uh, George or Michael or, you know, any of these guys, they are in fact loading in that Genesis 8 male base figure. And they're also applying a morph to it to turn it into the shape that George is or Victoria or Michael or any of these people. All of them are sliders that are technically, I don't want to make it too complex, but they're technically morph targets in a base geometry. As you shift it, the vertices that make up that shape move around. And the beauty of that is that you can mix and match them. You can blend them. You can blend George and Michael together to make something like a 50-50 version or a 20-80 version, or even throw in other characters. So this concept is important to understand about the Genesis figure because that's somewhat unique. Uh, if you look at most 3D content that comes in as one thing, like a chair, for example, if you need something else, then you'd bring in a different object and that has a completely different topology, a different material zones, and they're not compatible. But, you know, together they make up a scene, namely a chair and a table but you can't morph the chair into the table unless you're really fancy and usually people don't do that but with the genesis figure that is a unique concept that was introduced one base mesh and everything you do from it is just a shape and that also means things are compatible with one another so a jacket that fits michael will also fit george within reason you know there's always a little bit of stretching going on but that studio tries its best to make that happen let's look at a concrete example I will go and uh, maybe start with my man Michael. I think Michael is here somewhere. There it is. Michael 8. If I double click him, then I can go. Oh, yeah, actually, this is I need to tell you this. This is in the smart content tab. If I just show you Michael quickly, then we'll come back to content and how a smart content versus content library works. So double click Michael. Michael has these entries here, either all files or he has anatomy or he has figures, or he has materials. So all files means I see everything that's in this Michael product. If I just want to load in a figure, I head over to figures, and that's my Michael actor. If I double click him, then he will be loaded into the scene. If I select him, then things will be filtered out depending on what fits with Michael will be shown in the smart content library. And then with Michael, I can then add things like different eyebrows. I can apply uh, somebody else's skin texture and so forth. This is a little bit blown out, so <laughs> that means I need to introduce you to something else in DAS Studio, which is uh, how things appear that are in the viewport. I might just give them a little bit of underwear here. Just so briefly, I head over to wardrobe, 
and pick whatever I'd like uh, Michael to wear. So now this comes in handy here, filter by content. I'll use the Genesis 8 starter essentials because they come with, you know, fancy boxer shorts. So with the figure selected, you double click on an item of clothing and it snaps right on to Michael. And we don't see that here because it's parented to Michael. This is kind of the highlight I wanted to show you. If I select Michael up here and I go and head over to my parameters tab now, I'll show you where these morph sliders are that I've been talking about. So we, we saw me closing down the shaping tab. They're also on the shaping tab, but if you head over here into actor, and I'll close this down here. Under actor, we have this full body here. And full body is in fact all the full body morphs. These up here are people. These down here at the bottom of the list, those are shapes of the body that I can tune in. Like, you know, maybe I wanna make Michael a little bit heavy so I can left click and drag the heavy slider and Michael turns fat. So, you know, gains a few pounds here. Also, I can turn Michael into a fitness guy so I can just go and left click the, the fitness, crank that up, that was uh, the idea. He's getting a little bit fitter here. He's getting toned. I can also make him the other way around. I can turn him into an emaciated guy or we can go and turn him into a bodybuilder. And so this is what you can do with DAS characters. And the beauty of this is that the rigging and the materials and all the complicated setup, that all stays in place. You don't have to load in a second figure that now looks different. That's kind of the beauty of it. Those, those are things that you can dial in and literally build your own special character with it. You'll see here that I have a morph that's called the Michael 8 body morph. And if I left click and drag that, you'll see that my Michael guy, or at least his body, turns into the base Genesis guy. So at the far end on the left, I have the figure that was the Genesis 8 base character had I loaded that in. And by cranking up this slider, I turn this body into Michael's body. I have other bodies here, like Ichabod's body. If I turn him up, this is another custom character. It changes shape. There's also Holt, and I suppose they're all very unpronounced, but if I go and use something like the Brute, this is more pronounced. Here. Let me try the Brute. It's a very different body shape. So the cool thing about this is that I can go and mix 30% of the Brute and maybe 30% of Michael in, and maybe 30% of Underbelly, and then go and have a completely different custom character that I haven't had before. And this is really what makes DAS Studio shine. And this is why you can create so many different types of profile pictures. Usually the body morph is separated from the head morph that you have essentially three sliders. One is the complete figure, one's the head morph, and one's the body morph. So sometimes you wanna just mold a face. Sometimes you wanna change the body shape of a character. And these things let you do that. Let me go and reset these sliders here. If you wanted to ever reset any of these sliders that you come across in DAS Studio, hold down Alt and left click on this. That'll set these sliders back to zero. So Alt, left click, that'll set this back to zero. In my case, Michael's body is set to 100% because this is basically the reset for Michael. So I have people here as well. So under people, I see the full body slider. So if I go and say the brute now under people, I will see that not only my body changes, but also my character's size and my character's face here. That's why there's different things. So this is the combined head morph as well as the body morph. Previously, we were just looking at the body morph and we can look at the head morphs as well. That's over here under head. We have the people portion and here I can dial in the brute, just the head morph here. So this is how I can change his head shape. But, you know, and this is where the fun is only just beginning. The more products you have, the more sliders you have available. And it's just hours of fun. So this is now only the Brute. And this is the Brute with the Michael head. And I can also have Michael and Brute 50%. And maybe also mix in a little bit of Edward. A completely different guys or Holt. So very, very different variations here. So one of my favorite products is actually by 3D Universe and it's called Toon Generations and it'll turn this character into a toon. And I can either load this in from the content library or more importantly, I can go over to my parameters tab and see if I can find that here. I'm going to go with the full, um, full body here. So under actor people, I will go and say stylized. And this is one thing that I really love. Enable TG4. If you enable that, it turns your character into a toon. And that's kind of nice. You get the, the body proportions are different. You've got the larger head, you got the larger eyes, which is kind of cool. But where you said family resemblance of, of different people, 
3D Universe is one of those vendors you, you think, oh my God, how did you do that? There's this slider here, TG4 Age, and that will literally age your character and change all kinds of attributes on it. So currently the default value is 21. So I suppose that's kind of her age, you know, two generations age. And watch the figure. If I go and left click and drag this over to the left, she turns into a little girl and into, in fact, a baby. And you can put this into any age you want. This is kind of eight, nine now it says. We're back at 15, 16. We're back at kind of 21. But watch what happens when I slide it to the right. She goes and grows older, older, older. Now she's kind of in her 50s. And now she's a senior, age 60. Isn't that amazing? That is just so cool. And it's one figure. And all the clothing that you put on it will still fit, which is just unbelievable. It's just so cool.